How many of you like big things? You like big things? I mean, we're Americans after all, aren't we? We're Ameri- We like big things, man, a Big Mac. Okay, uh, what else is big? You know, like a big, I don't know what you like. You like all, all things big. Cause you're, I mean, if you're Ron Swanson, you like a 64 ounce soda. Isn't that right? All right, you give me a diet, but it's 64 ounce. Man, he gets him a, a child size. And it's not a child size, it's the size of a child. You know, we like big things. We like big things as Americans. And it's just, it's just kind of the way thing. We love big cars. Well, I mean, if, it, if it's small, it better be fast, okay? But I li- we like big minivans. It's got to be big. It's got to be big. We like big paychecks. Come on, somebody. Nobody disagrees with me there. You're like, okay, I'm listening. Big paychecks. We like big houses. We like big churches, whether we admit it or not. We do. We like big promotions, and there's nothing wrong with, with big. But here's, here's the thing that Jesus teaches us today. Everything in the kingdom starts small. First note in your, in your handout and the, the thing that we're going to kind of talk about today a lot is, is things in the kingdom, they, they start small. We love big things, but everything in the kingdom starts small. So let's, let's jump into the word here and hear what Jesus has to say about it. Matthew 13 says this, the kingdom of heaven, Jesus speaking, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, mustard seed planted in a field. It's the smallest of all seeds, but it becomes the largest of garden plants. It grows into a tree and the birds come and make nests in its branches. Okay, small things growing big. Now keep that in your heart because we're going to talk about that all day. We're going to be talking about something starts small, but then it grows big, but then it grows big. All right, and so this is what happens. Just a couple chapters later, a couple chapters later, uh, the disciples are trying to cast out a demon. The disciples are trying to do something big, and, and Jesus is on this big the, the, the moment of transfiguration, I don't know if you've heard of that, but it's when, it's when Moses shows up and Elijah's there and Jesus' face is like, oh, beaming and it's crazy moment, big mountaintop moment. Jesus comes back to, to see the rest of his disciples. They couldn't get something done. They, they couldn't accomplish something. And, and they, they, they're like, Jesus, what's up? What's going on? And this is what happens in, in Matthew 17. Afterward, the disciples asked, after they couldn't cast out the demon, they said, why couldn't we cast out that demon? And he says, you don't have enough faith. I tell you the truth. If you had faith even as big as a mountain. No, that's not what he said. If you had faith even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move. Nothing would be impossible for you. Nothing. Faith, our faith ought to be like a seed. Small, but growing. Small but growing faith. Seeds grow. And and the title of today's message is how to grow your faith. How to grow your faith. It's not a bad thing to have small faith. I I mean, if anybody ever told you that, they they weren't listening to Jesus. Because Jesus said, I want you to have faith this big. But it grows. It grows. Be willing to do that. And nothing kills faith. Nothing like keeps our faith from growing like fear. Can I get an amen? Like, you don't want to say amen to fear, but it's, it's, it's true. Man, we're scared of a lot of things. And I actually wrote down a list. I brought a list up here with me of some fears. These are some real fears right here. And see if you recognize some of this. Um, arachnophobia. Y'all know what that is, the fear of? Yeah, y'all know that one. Y'all know that one. That one's easy, you know, and it's so common that they made a name for it. Here's another one you maybe have heard of, uh, and I'm going to butcher all these. So I don't want to get any emails about it. I don't want to, you know what? If anybody pronounces them right, they've got something wrong with them. Okay, so here's, here's this next one. Aero, aerophobia. That, there it is. Fear of flying. A lot of people with the fear of flying, not a lot of people know how to say it. Oh, I have aerophobia. I have aerophobia. How about this one? Uh, if you can guess this one, I'll give you something like a high five. I was going to give you money, but no. How about cinephobia? Fear of sin. No, that's not it. Cinephobia, like with a C Y. That's the fear of dogs. A lot of people have a fear of dogs, but they don't know how to pronounce it. It's xenophobia. Something like that. Maybe it is. But, you know, we've gone too far with fear. I wrote down a few more. I wrote down a few more. And these ones, these are real according to Google, okay? Uh, how about this one? Um, pogonophobia. Pogonophobia. Pogo sticks? No, no. That one's the fear of beards. The fear of beards, which is I think I have that, which is why I can only grow a half beard. That's right. I have pogonophobia right there. I can only grow a half beard because I got pogonophobia. How about this one? Uh, nomophobia. Nomophobia. No mo. Here's. It's the fear of phones. It's the fear of phones. Nobody has that fear these days. 
Nomophobia. That's what they should have called it. That, you know, if they would have asked me, I would have told them. How about this one? Um, Plutophobia. Plutophobia. A planet? Well, Pluto's not a planet. So like, there you go. It's like Rex is right there. I don't know if it is or not. I can't keep up. I can't keep up with Pluto. Plutophobia is the fear of money. The fear of like being afraid of having money, like actual money. Nah, no money. I think when Tiffany and I first got married, we had this fear. Come on, somebody laugh with me. Laugh because cry real tear. We had the fear of money because we were broke. Okay, and this last one hit me for real because I was uh, preaching this as I always do at the Bible study uh, during the week, uh, the, pre, the pre-message. And there was a, uh, I, I was in a place, I'm not gonna say where, but I had my jacket draped over the, the seats and a little cockroach ran up. <sighs> Cat sardidiophobia. I have catsideridiophobia is the fear of roaches. We've gone too far with fear. It's just, I don't know if half of these fears are real, but I'll tell you this, fear is real. Yeah. Come on, somebody. I, I know fear is real. Being afraid in general is real, and I want to deal with that. I want to talk about how we can grow in our faith, get out of that fear, and gr- I'll tell you a quick story about how, um, about how I was afraid of something unreasonable. Uh, it was my wedding day. Okay. <laughs> And I had never been more sure about any person in my entire life. No joke. No joke. I, I've told this story before. You know, I, I saw Tiffany, uh, Pastor Tiffany, up here playing her guitar. And I was like, the, the, the spotlight or the beam from heaven was shining. And I was like, yes, there she is. That's going to be my wife. And the way I made her my wife is I didn't tell her she was going to be my wife. All right. That's a note for all you single people out there. All right. You tell someone that they're going to be your wife or your husband later, then there's no surefire way to get it to not happen other than that. That is like, don't do that, please. Single people, bear with me. Let's go. But on my wedding day, it was terrible. And I'm a performer. I thought I had everything going. Like, it was terrible. I was clammy. I was pasty. I was sweating. Some of you were there. You were like a part of that process with me. And I'm like, I, I play guitar up here. I I preach and I'm used to this, but I was so nervous. I was so nervous. I was a hot man. I had a little song planned. Couldn't remember the lyrics. It was so bad. It was so bad. Any of you would have done better than me that day. I could not relax until that day was over. But think about it. Like if I had given into that fear, an unreasonable one, like the best woman in the entire world, in the entire planet, so clear from day one, she's the woman for me, everything's perfect. But it's like this, sometimes we have unreasonable fear that gets in the way of the things we know we ought to be doing. The things that we know, we know we got to grow our faith. We know we got to do these right things. But these unreasonable fears come and get in our way. And I took that, I mean, two little words is all I needed. Two words, three letters, I do. Like, come on, it was so easy. But fear was trying to, to, to get, does anybody relate with this? Like sometimes, maybe it's not your wedding day, maybe it's not, mar- but it's something and it's getting in your way and it's stopping you. So I, I want to give you uh, some things that might help you. I want to talk to you about seed faith beliefs. I'm going to give you a few of these seed faith beliefs, things that you can just, hold, beliefs and truths that you can hold on to that are going to help you. These are in your notes. I'm going to explain how Jesus described faith, small but growing small but growing. Hold on to these truths. The first one of this is this. His nature is faithful. His nature, like just hold on to that. Just hold on to the fact that God is faithful. God's nature, he's faithful. It's who he is. Start with that. Start with that small seed where you just planted it. Well, I know this. I don't know everything, but I know this. God's faithful. If you could just start there, that's a seed kind of faith that I want you to have. Uh, Deuteronomy 7, 9 says this. Understand, therefore, that the Lord your God is indeed God. He is the faithful God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations. He's faithful. He's faithful and lavishes his unfailing love on those who love him and obey his commands. It's like, just get that in your heart. His promises are yes and amen. amen. I got some good church people up in here that know a couple scriptures. That's okay. If you don't know that one, that's there's another scripture somewhere else that says his promises are yes and amen. It's like, I'm doubling this. His promises, he's faithful to them. He's faithful to them. Listen, your parents, they might be a little undependable. I understand that. I am a parent and I am a little undependable sometimes. <laughs> like I just said, we are. People are undependable. Your parents, undependable. Your boss, undependable. 
You cannot count on what kind of mood they're gonna be in that day. Your spouse might even let you down here and there, even as your pastor. <gasps> I'm not always dependable. People will let, God is always faithful. That's the seed I want you to, don't plant a seed in, that your spouse is never gonna let you down, that your boss is never gonna let you down, that your pastor's, plant the seed that God is never gonna let you down. And I don't know what's on the other side of this hill, but I know God is faithful and just to do what he said and forgive me of my sins and, and help me and be there for me. That's number one. That's that seed faith belief. He's, he's faithful. And th that kind of leads into the second one. Could be the same point, but I decided to make it too. His word is reliable. Second little blank you can fill. His word is reliable. Like this right here, you can count on this. You can count on this. I'm talking about the 66 books, Genesis to Revelation, none of that extra stuff that's going on. I don't know anybody, any of that. 66 books, Genesis to Revelation, everything in there, I can count on that. It's reliable. Even if I can't see it playing out in this moment, I know he's faithful, God's faithful, and his word's reliable because God said even about Jesus, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Every single word right here is gonna be, is gonna be there for us. Get that seed down in your heart, growing. Listen to what the word says about it, about the word. The word says this about itself. <laughs> Romans 10, 17. So faith, we're talking about faith, right? Faith comes by hearing and hearing from the word of God. So faith is built and grown by depending on the word of God, by depending on the word of God. If we took more time listening to what this says and a little less time listening to what our favorite TikTok influencer said, you know what I'm saying? Like if we just did this, his word's reliable. I can depend on this. I'm not trying to depend on everything else in the world. I'm not going to try to depend on all of that stuff. I'm going to the word. Your situation would be better off if you learned to rely more on this. I was taught like this growing up in church. Uh, I didn't grow up in church, but growing up in my faith, I got saved as an adult. But as I was here, this is how I was taught. It's like a cup, right? And you are the cup and you got some murky water in there, right? It's okay. We all do. It's a little muddy. It's a little murky. It's kind of... but. The word is like a faucet turned on full blast. And you stick that cup under there and it starts to flush out all the yuck, all the murky, all the uncertainty. Do you, know, you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. It starts to flush out all the things that are weighing us down. And the longer you hold it under that faucet, the more, as time goes on, it just gets clearer and clearer and clearer. Of course, we have a sin nature. So like microscope, like there's still like something, but it's flushed out. Like you could drink that. Is good to go. And that's what the word of God is like. We want to fill our lives with that. We want to fill our lives with that because we know his word is reliable. It's reliable. All right. So another seed faith belief I want you to have is his time takes longer. His time takes longer. Probably you're not as excited about this one. That's all right. That's okay. That's all right. We got to let time do its work sometimes. We got to let God do his work over time sometimes. We don't just like big, we like fast, don't we? We don't just like Big Macs. I want it in my car. I don't want to get out of my car to get it, and I want it now. I want it fast. We don't just like big. We like fast. Someone said amen to that. You're like, yes, right? I'm getting that Taco Bell right after this. It's going to be great. But listen to what Hebrews, listen to what Hebrews 6 says. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance until the end. That you do not become sluggish, but imitate those, watch this, those who's, who through faith and patience inherited the promises. Imitate people that have patience. That's what it's telling us to do. Watch people that have patience and keep on doing the right thing, the next right thing, day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out. And they had to wait a while, but they had patient endurance and they were faithful. His, God's time takes longer. I, I would argue this. I don't know if it's like absolutely true. Sometimes he comes through for us faster, but I think God always takes a little longer than we want him to. <laughs> he always takes a little. I want him to come through right now right now. And so do you. Don't lie to me. I, I can see you. It's dim in here, but I can see you. I can see you. You want him to come. I want him to come through before I even need him to come through. I don't even want to face any problems at all. And if I'm facing a problem, I've already been facing it for too long, but his time takes longer. You know, uh, I, I just got to tell you, um, you know, we've got to hang in there. 
Um, I, I, there's an there's a old commercial, you know, just to dabble, do ya? Is that the, the hair cream, right? My, my homie told me about the hair cream. It's the Briole, Braille, Braille, Braille cream. It's some kind of cream that just a dab will do you. But just a dab of this, just a dab of church, just a dab of uh, praying, just a dab of the Bible. Hey, just to see faith is all you need, but just a dab of diligence won't do you. You've got to hang in there. We've got to be willing that we don't need Christmas and Easter kind of faith. Oh, we don't need twice a month faith. You know, I just pop in when I, you know, whatever. No, we need, we need to kind of dive into this. Online church, <laughs> hi, hey, online church, I love you. I do, I'm glad we have the technology to do it, but a dab here and there fitted into my already whatever life, man. If you can't make it, I love you, but if you can, What's up? Hey, good to see you. Come on, there's this, we got a chair for you right here. All right, they're running out though. Got to hurry. Act now. Come on. <laughs> we got to let time do its work. We got to let time do its work. You put the faith in, you put your, your work in and faith does its work over time. Last one is this, last one. Um, the seed, faith, belief is our, our response is to believe and act. Our response, okay, what? I just need to plant the seed. All I need to do is believe in him and act on something. Like I, I can start small. I can start small. Don't be afraid to start small. Just start with what you see. Start with what you know you ought to do. Watch this in Hebrews 11. Now jump into Hebrews 11. It's impossible to please God without faith. Just a little bit. That's all. You don't need a whole bunch. You just need a little bit. Faith, just start small. Let it grow though. It's impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe he exists. Like, just start there. Okay, he's real. Like, we got, we, if we got that out of the way, you can grow. If you can just get there with me, and there's going to be an opportunity even at the end of today's service for you to make that confession, for you to make that seed kind of faith. Like, just believe he's real. Mm, it's so important. It's possible to please God without faith. We must believe God exists, and he rewards those who sincerely seek him. Amen. Oh, Come on, let's just seek him. Let's just chase after him. Let's just pursue him. Let's just be committed to at least do this one thing, grow in him. Just grow in him. Just take the steps, one step at a time, one, one day after the other. Just believing he ex exists is a step. Every journey starts with a step. But you gotta keep taking steps. We keep taking steps. You have to put yourself out there in your face sometimes. Now, I want to leave you with a couple things that you can do because I, I love teaching you beliefs. I love teaching you truths from the Bible. I get all preachy about it. But I also love to give you something that you can do with your faith. So I'm calling these seed faith steps. Seed, seed faith steps. Some practical idea. These are three we statements, or I'm calling them the three we's. Y'all ready for the three we's? All right, let's do it then. Three we's. Number one, we get big by starting small. All right? Like, just start small. You need an action step? Start small and start soon. <laughs> start soon and start small. When we have a big problem, we come to God and expect big solutions sometimes. We're like, oh, God, I got this huge problem. Please help me. Oh, everything's falling apart. Everything's going bad. And Jesus comes, okay, here's a seed. And we're like, what? What are you talking about? And you're like, yeah, just plant this. Nurture it. Care for it. <laughs> We want big solutions to our big problems and we want them fast, we want them now, but don't be afraid, everybody. Lifeline Church, don't be afraid to start small. Man, it's gonna take some time, it's gonna take some cultivating, but you're gonna see some growth over time. Uh, and it's not me that makes the promise, it's the word of God that makes fruitful people are people of faith who understand the power of small. Here's every pastor's favorite verse, and you'll see why when I read it, Zechariah 4.10. Do not despise small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. Every business startup and every pastor loves that verse because, man, don't be, don't be shy. Don't be shy about things starting small. Don't be worried about things starting small in your life. Man, just a, just a small reading plan, stick to it. Just a small prayer time, stick to it. Just keep, this is every single area of your life. Now, I know that in Zechariah, this was a prophet, Zechariah, and God was talking to him about building a temple, but I know for a fact that it, it, this applies to more than just building a building. You think God was just saying, this is only about building a building. No, 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 no. This is about, this is a principle in life. Don't be, don't despise small beginnings. Let's talk about your career for a minute. 
Let's talk about your career for a minute. Everybody wants a big career. Everyone wants a big business. Everyone wants those big paychecks that we were all cheering about earlier. Remember that? Yeah, everyone wants big, but there's a reason you don't see a lot of um, 18-year-old business moguls. You know? <laughs> because they're dumb. They don't know life. I'm just saying, if you're 18, you're not dumb. You're not dumb. But if you do see an 18-year-old business mogul, you better believe they started at age 13. That's all I'm saying. Okay, you got to be not afraid to start as a dishwasher if you want to be a restaurant owner. You see, you see what I'm saying? Like, just be, start as a servant. Just start as someone who's willing to put the work in. You, we all want big stuff. We all want big things. We want to have all the, the, our heart's desires. Don't be afraid to start small. Don't be afraid to start small. How about your marriage? Ooh, let's get all up in your business. Let's talk about it. We all want a good, rock-solid marriage, don't we? Have you ever met a newlywed before? They're a mess. They're met. They are crazy. They're wild. Man, that first year, I don't care who you are. It's not going good. All right? I've, I must have facilitated uh, probably, I don't know, like 20 weddings in my, in my lifetime so far. And all of them in that first year are like, I'm just, <laughs> you got to work at it, man. It takes, it takes time to build a rock solid marriage. It, I don't care who you are because it takes time to build trust. It takes time to build relationships. It takes time. But we look at these marriages and then we like elbow our spouse. Look what they're doing. Oh, don't do that. See, pet peeve of mine. I see people do, oh, look what they, look what they do. We look at people that have what we want and we almost inevitably forget how much work had to go into getting that. Let's be people who appreciate, man, I want what they have and I'm willing to do the work they did to get it. Yeah. It's not a bad thing to look up to someone and to, to want what they have or not in the, in the greedy sense, but in the sense of, man, they have a good marriage. I want to have a good marriage. Man, they have a good business life. I want to have a good business. It's not wrong to look at models and methods and all that, but don't, don't be foolish in knowing that those people, you want what they have, but you, are you willing to do what they did to get it? Do that in your career, in your marriage. Man, we buy fully developed fruit trees from Costco. No one, no one in the world <laughs> thinks they just appeared out of thin air. You're all smart enough to know somebody had to cultivate that. But we have that McDonald's mentality. Like, I just want it now. Who do I buy, who do I buy it from? Who do I buy a good marriage from? Who do I buy a good career from? Like, wh where's the devil? Like, uh, it's me selling my soul to him. Like, I've heard about it, but I don't see him anywhere. It's like, we, we want to have what we want, but are we willing to get it the right way? So, boom, there it is right there. Number two, seed faith steps. Number two, you ready for this one? We get more of what we water. We get more of what we water. I feel like I'm the chief reminding officer today. Some of you already know this, but you just need to be reminded of it. You need to be reminded of it. The step is so simple. Just water what you want more of. We get more of what we want. Faithful people keep investing in what they know the Bible tells them is important. Okay? And that's, that's key. That's key in what the Bible tells us is important. Because we can be looking in the world to see what's getting results, whatever. But if we're outside of here, we might be, set, we might be watering some things that are setting us up for failure down the road. You see what I'm saying? Like, we need to be right here. Faithful people know that I'm going to invest in what the Bible tells me to invest in, and that's going to produce life for my family, for my career, for, for my whole life. My whole life, I'm going to invest in that. James 2.17 says this, in the same way, faith by itself, faith by itself, with, and when it's not accompanied by action, is dead. I don't, wanna, I don't wanna raise up a bunch of people that say, I have faith. Well, then how about this? No, I'm just gonna have faith. <laughs> My faith don't wanna, we, no, we get more of what we water, what we do, what we water. If you don't act on your faith, it dies. We need to act on our faith. And I wanna show you that um, psychologists have proven this. So, like the world has proven this. This is God's principle, thousands of years old, this truth. But scientists recently have kind of proven it. I wanna show you the forgetting curve. Uh, the forgetting curve up on the screens for you shows us how fast we forget new information. Uh, some German guy cannot pronounce his name. I'm really bad at pronouncing today. I don't know what it is, but all those fears and this German guy's name, Hagenbergenmeyer. I don't know. The forgetting curve is what I'm calling it. It shows us that when we learn something new, like when we read our Bible in the morning or we hear a sermon or whatever, 
every day that goes by, it's like jumping off a cliff of our retention. This is a depressing curve. By the time we get to next Sunday, you already forgot what last week's message was about. It's, yeah, we do too sometimes. We're like, hey, what'd y'all preach on last week? Just can't remember. Can't remember. <laughs> Essentially, we lose everything after about a week. It's like you only can retain so much. It's very depressing. And it's exactly why Christians, not you, none of you, but Christians feel just about, they, they feel just as bad about life every single week because we learn something, but we don't put it into practice. So of course, this study demands another of what if we do put it into practice? Let's put that one up. Let's see what happens when we practice what we're learning. This is what happens. So if we hear something and then the next day, like the notes, we're always talking about notes, take some notes, put it, and when you put it into practice, it brings you right back up and then watch what happens. It actually, your attention gets higher and higher the more times you review something. I mean, it makes sense, right? I'm not, this is not like, wow, I can't believe that's true. The more you review something, the better it gets. How about it's true for your faith too? How about it's true for the Bible too? Like instead of just journaling about your Bible, how about you like do the things you journaled about? <laughs> instead of just reading it and posting about it, whatever, why did you do it? Because why? Because it actually builds it into our life. Builds it into a practice what you learn or water, water it. Like to bring it back to the illustration, we get more of what we water. Put into practice what you learn in church. That's why life groups. That's why we're, we try to get you in life groups every week. Why? Because it's going to bless your life. Why do we try to get you on the dream team? Every, it's a growth track this, growth track that. Always talking about growth track every month. Why? Because we want to get you to practice what you're learning. This is a good environment to grow in. But if you don't put something into practice, you're going to lose it. You're going to lose it. It's, it's at, atrophy of the soul, of the spirit. We want to get you on a serving team where you're actually putting your faith into action. We want to get you into a, a life group where you're processing, talking with, and reviewing what you're learning in here. Because why? It's going to build your faith. It's going to grow your faith. And you don't have to be a Bible scholar. Seed faith. It's a seed. It's growing, though. Nurture that. Don't just come to church every week. Yeah, well, yes, come to church every week. I want you to add to that, though. Man, we're at, we ask for a lot around here. How about a couple things a week? How about you hear the message and then you try to put it into practice on Monday? How about that? Like, it's, it's actually going to bless you. It's going to bless every area of your life. And this, is this last one, we're going to close with this. We get in the right environment. This seed faith step is getting in the right environment. This is huge. This is huge. This is like, if I saved it for last because I feel like it could be one of the most important. Faith is contagious. I don't know if you know this or not. I know it's true. The Bible knows it's true too. And I'm gonna share a scripture with you in a second. But faith is contagious. It's an atmosphere. There's an atmosphere of faith. There's, there's something, to have, something to having faithful people around you that, that lifts you up, that, that keep our head lifted up, that encourage us in the word. It's like iron sharpens iron. Listen to what, what Proverbs eleven fourteen says. Where there is no counsel where there is no spiritual people around you, where you're not being in a life group, when you're not staying consistent in church, when you're not doing all these things, when, when there's no counsel, the people fall. When you stay out of these, these faithful environments, when you stay out of these, these, these environments, the small groups and, the, and all this, you're, you will fall. We all will. We will fall. But in a multitude of counselors, there's safety. It's safety for your family. It's safety for your heart. It's safety for your mind. I talk to people on just such a regular basis that are plagued in their minds with anxiety, stress, fear. And if I'm just honest, these are the people farthest away from Sunday mornings. They're farthest away from life groups. They're farthest away from the env faithful environments, environments of faith. This is like the, 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 the capstone. This is like the cherry on top. This is like the big one. Just put yourself in the environment of faith. See, you can't grow in the right environment. We talked about that all week last week. We talked about that, the soils, the environment. We've got to, we've got to keep ourselves in the faithful environment. So let's bring this home. 
It's the number one desire of parents. Number one, second to none. These parents wanna, wanna transfer their faith to their kids. Anybody resonate with that? Yeah. I, wanna tra- I want my kids to be, to be well, to be okay, to be faithful, to be strong, to be raised a little bit better than we were. You know, that's like the kind of things we say, but we want good things for our kids. We want good things for our kids, but you can't transfer what you don't have. But I see, I see parents doing this all the time. I want, I want to package it up and send you off to Bible camp. I want to send you off to wherever so that you can get it, but you can't transfer that what you don't have. We need to be the right environment for our families. So we need to be in the right environment, absolutely 100%, but we've got to be the right environment for, for the ones we love the most. A while back, and this happens all the time, all the time, super sad. It's, it, it breaks my heart every single time, but it happens so frequently. Like I'm online a lot. You, you know, if you're, on, if you're on social media, you see me on there because I'm on there all the time. I'm posting stuff all the time. And so I got a lot of people that consider me their pastors that don't come here, that, that don't go to church anywhere. It's a, it's a blessing, but it's also very revealing that that's the kind of the, the state of our culture and society right now is that people are looking for a pastor, but they're like afraid to go into church. And Lifeline Church, we gotta change that. We gotta, we gotta remove the fear of showing up to a church. We gotta remove the fear of people being here. That's why we, you know, greeting and all that. But anyways, one of these folks who none of you know, um, but I'm gonna keep it anonymous still, but they reach out to me and it's the same story I hear so often. My kids are going wild and my spouse, is falling apart and it's going, t- like, like it's just tragic, some of these stories I get. They, they reach out to me on, on whatever and I'm just like, oh my God. There's, it's like they're, they're sharing these stories and I'm just like getting choked up going, how do you live? How do you live like that? It's tragic. The kids are, are going crazy. The, 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 the marriage is just teetering and every, it's like, please pray for me, and I always do. Please give me some advice, and I always give it to him. But here's the thing, like, I'm, and I, I, just, I was reminded about it just recently. I know deep down, and I know from the word of God, prayer is helpful, advice is helpful, but I know they need this. They need to be in the environment. They need to be in the house, and I tell them that. Man, come on. Come on, get you, like even if they're out of state or whatever, find you a life-giving church. Bring your kid. Don't miss. Go every single time the doors. You need this environment because your environment is out. It's crazy and it's just, it's devastating. We need this environment to hold us up, to keep us accountable, to keep us encouraged, right? We need this so much. They, I know what these people need is prayer, advice, but they need to go all in for Jesus and his church. Let's not forget this is his church. I don't preach church, I preach Jesus and we are his body, the church. So it's like, you can't separate them as much as people want to somehow. I don't understand it. But what what I'd love for you, everyone listening online, everybody here, don't miss this. Commit to that environment. Commit to the environment. Commit to taking that step of faith to say, all right, I'm here. It's my family. I'm going to be here. I'm going to grow with you. That commitment is going to build character in me. It's not always going to be easy. Just even like admit it to yourself. This ain't going to be easy. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the things. I'm going to be here. I'm going to stay committed to it. I'm going to block it out. My calendar, whatever. Be a person with growing faith. Because listen, you could teach people. You could teach your kids. You could teach your family what you know. But you transfer what you have. You reproduce what you have. You reproduce who you are. What, who you are gets reproduced. And if you want that for your family, if you want that for your loved ones, if you want that for the people around you, man, don't, don't just give advice, don't just pray. Man, be the person who's growing in faith. Be the person who is the right environment, staying in the right environment, but being the right environment for others. I want, I want that for you, I want that for us. I thank God someone did that for me. So I was able to come in. 
I just want, I just want you to, to see this. You could transfer what you have. You can, you can give advice, but you reproduce who you are. So be a person who is growing in faith. And maybe for you, that just means saying yes to Jesus today. Maybe it's just saying yes to God, that seed, faith, belief of just saying, all right, I'm going I'm to come to him. I'm going to come to him. So let's do that now. Let's bow our heads, close our eyes. I have a feeling that some of you here are ready to make that step. And I'm, I'm so excited to take the step with you. So with heads down, eyes closed, I just want to pray over two groups of people. Um, maybe you used to have a relationship with God, but you've grown distant over time. I want to remind you that God is not mad at you. He is not irritated with your absence. He is not upset, but he is like the prodigal. He is like the father of the prodigal son that we find in Luke 15, that when the son comes back, even at a far off distance, the father comes running. That's, that's how he feels about you. He comes, run, whenever he starts to see you from a distance coming back, he runs for you. So if you used to have a relationship, used to be faithful, but something happened along the way where you got distant, I wanna tell you, God's not mad. He's gonna run back to you. And he's gonna meet you right there, right there. Maybe some of you have never had that kind of relationship with God. And I just wanna tell you that the heaven rejoices, rejoices when you, when you plant the seed of faith to say, I believe in Jesus as the son of God and he's the, the forgiver of my sins. He died for my sins. So if I described you in any kind of way and you're ready to to turn back and get in the right environment again and jump back in for God. If you would just lift your hand for me so I know who I'm praying for. Come on, let's just do it right now. Amen. Yes. Yes. Anybody else? Yes. Anybody else? Anybody else here? Do they want to do that? Yes. Oh, I see you. Hallelujah. Anybody else? This is your moment. This is your time. Yes, I see you. Amen. So church, this is what, this is what we like to do and I'm going to invite you to do it. We're going to pray together out loud. And so no one's doing it alone. No one's praying alone. But if it's from your heart, I want you to pray it right after me. Say, Father God, I give you my heart. I give you my life. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for my sin. Forgive me of all my sin. Fill me with your spirit and show me the path that I should walk. In Jesus' name, amen.